hello, a very good morning to you all. Very quiet this morning uh, for a Thursday. At least a try. Thanks to all those who uh, came to the prayer meeting last night. Just to encourage you, I want to uh, encourage you all to really seek God, you know, really seek God. Get into prayer and really ask God to reveal something to you and something to the church. Because I really feel a rise in my spirit. I know I keep saying this, but I just feel it. And uh, I want to hear God's prophetic voice speaking to us as a church. So really pray. Get uh, into your prayer books and pray in your prayer books. They're, they're only, of course, these are only, it's an only prayer journal I have. Uh, it's just a little thing you can. But anyway, they're, they're only a pointer, all right? They're not, they're not the definite no way to pray but they're only a pointer uh, so let's seek God together and see what God is saying because uh, I believe that we need to hear from let's let's pray now shall we and uh, just ask his blessing upon us father we come to you today in the name of Jesus and we know Lord regardless of all the fear and anxiety that is out there that behind the scenes you're up to something and we want to embrace that we want to hear from you father because we want to follow your plans and your purposes and we know that you have plans and know that you have purposes. Lord, when COVID-19 started, you just didn't step out and say, oh, let it go ahead. But Lord, we know that you're with us. So help us, encourage us, fire us up, Lord. Help us to hear from you. Help us to take time out of our schedules just to be alone in the presence of God. We pray for the sick, Lord, and we ask that you continually touch and heal and restore. We do pray, Lord, for Helen at this time and we pray for Joe at this time, Lord, that they might know the healing touch of God and Violet might know the healing touch of God and Jane might know the healing touch of God and Robin might know the healing touch of God and Herbie uh, also, Father, and others in the church, Lord, who need that special touch. We're asking that you would raise them up, that you would strengthen them, Lord, that you would minister to them, Lord, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them, Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are in control. We thank you that you are our God. And we thank you that all things are possible. So bless us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Right, let, I want to read from uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15 this morning. And this is something I, th I think we all, we all need. Uh, the problem is we, we may not want to confess it. But anyway, let's just read. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. One thing about the peace of God is that when you have the real peace of God, no matter what is taking place, whether it's in the world or whether it's in your life, you will be very calm about the whole thing there would be a, a, a sense of solemnity and very often during those times people look at you in an estranged way because they expect you to act as they would act when a storm comes along when the disciples were in the boat and the sea was bolsterous boisterous and they, i think uh, well, the truth is they were very experienced fishermen, but they were very afraid. And it is hard to get uh, experienced fishermen to be frightened about anything. I watch sometimes on a television, Deadliest Catch, you know, and I watch these guys out on the boats. And my goodness gracious me, I got to tell you, I wouldn't get out on them. The way they're diving into the waves and the waves are coming on deck is absolutely horrifying. And I believe it was no different for the disciples in their experience of fishing. But they're very frightened and yet Jesus is down in the hole, completely at peace and sleeping through the whole thing. And I think when you have the peace of Jesus in your heart that you almost, well, the, it's, 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 it's an experience of sleeping through the whole thing until the storm passes. At least that's the evidence you, that, that these people produce to an unsafe world. So I think there's a lesson in this. When, when we have the peace of God or when someone has the peace of God and they're going through 
a trial or real difficulty and 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 they act differently than you and me that we do don't become sort of judgmental or we don't think they should be acting as we should be acting the peace of god passes all pain all anguish all sickness and all the storms of life it's an incredible incredible experience and here's the good news it's available to you and it is available to me if we only ask there's a story about two old friends who bumped into one another in the street one day and one man looked very sad and discouraged almost on the verge of tears and his friend very gently put his arm around him and asked what has the world done in you my old friend what has the world done in you the sad fellow said three weeks ago a rich uncle of mine died and to my surprise he included me in his will and his lawyers sent me a check for forty thousand pound that's terrific said the friend that's a that's a lot of money yes but two weeks ago they sent me another check this time it was for one hundred thousand pound wow said the friend that's absolutely incredible you have truly and really been blessed you don't understand the man continued to wane last week i got another check in the mail that was larger than the first two it was for a quarter of a million two hundred and fifty thousand pounds at this moment the friend was very confused you're right he said i don't understand why are you so unhappy why do you look so down and so glum because this week i haven't received anything came the reply wow incredible it's really a a, a, a story that probably didn't really happen in, but i think it enforces the truth sometimes in life we are so blessed that we for whatever reason begin to think that we are entitled to all the good things that come our way to all the good things that come our way perhaps it's our human nature i don't know but we think we have a divine entitlement if you give a small baby a gift they'll treasure it but if you give them two gifts they start to wonder why they didn't get a third but what happens in life when you start to lose things that you've come to expect and we've all suffered loss what happens when your bank balance isn't as it should be what happens when you get sick and you can't do some of the things that you've planned to do if you're like most people that i meet you probably become resentful and you probably become angry and most people believe it or not become resentful and angry towards god you don't realize and we all don't realize that that the things we have are privileges and they've always been privileges and they're not a uh, 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 right they are divine blessings from god and not a right we don't deserve any of them we haven't been we haven't guaranteed for ourselves any of them they are his blessings and they'll always be his blessings none of us and this is a, a a truth for all christians that none of us deserves the things we have we in northern ireland and the uk in comparison to other parts of the world where people really really suffer whether it's africa or north korea we 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 have experienced immense blessing yet for whatever reason in the world that we live in it seems that we we believe we still don't have enough we still have to get a bigger house and we still have to get a better car we always want more and more and more and more and we are, aren't very grateful for what we do have i wonder here's a challenge for every single one of us i wonder how many times you really 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 take a few minutes to thank god for what you have if you haven't maybe start doing it today i don't say this to get at anyone i i speak it to myself also but i think that when we do this and when we appreciate what we have then god is satisfied with our very 
lives, in particular our Christian life. It's so important for us to practice an attitude of gratitude. We need to take time every day to thank God for the blessings he has given us. When you're thankful for what you have, you'll be able without a shadow of a doubt to live every day with joy and to live every day with the peace of God. Whether you get more or not, you will be satisfied. May God bless this word to your heart. Have a wonderful day and hope to see you all soon. God bless you. Have a great day.